Earlier this week, it was revealed that Virginia's Democratic governor, Ralph Northam, had appeared either in blackface or dressed in the hooded robe of and uniform of a Ku Klux Klansman in his 1984 medical school yearbook. This has produced national controversy and calls for the governor's resignation. Northam released a statement earlier Friday afternoon apologizing for the photo. However, many people, including former Governor Terry McAuliffe, are still calling on Northam to resign. Another Virginia politician, State Senator Tommy Norman, the Republican Majority Leader, was also caught in the blackface scandal after it was revealed on Thursday that he was one of the editors of a 1968 Virginia Military Institute yearbook that had featured racist language and students in blackface. Through the months of January and February, the senior government classes take their annual trip to the York County Circuit Court and Virginia Peninsula Regional Jail. On this trip, students are able to apply the things they learn in their government classes to real-world situations. Students are first taken to court to hear trials and then taken on a tour of the jail. Overall, the trip allows students to see how our government works in the area around us. Famous rapper 21 Savage has been detained by the ICE on accounts of being in the United States illegally. While his fans have been under the impression that he'd been born and raised in Atlanta, recent events uncover that he moved to the UK to Atlanta on a child visa, that of which expired when he turned 15. Since then, he's been living undocumented in the US, shocking his enormous fan base. It's that time of year again where everything is pink and red and love is all around. On February 14th, we show our appreciation for our loved ones by exchanging gifts. But what are some gifts you can give them that don't fall under the generic category of chocolate flowers and teddy bears? A framed photo collage can be made easy online or in stores at Walgreens or CVS. You can upload the pictures from your phone and arrange them however you like. Add a frame and you've got a personal gift your loved ones will appreciate tremendously. Another personalized and unique gift for someone who means a lot to you is a music playlist. Choose songs that are significant to you and your loved one and that remind you of them. You can use Apple Music or Spotify to create and share your playlist. These are just a few ideas for creative and easy gifts that you can give this Valentine's Day. Welcome to your weekly weather with Weatherman Fleming. We decided to get rid of that Alex kid. Anyways, this week has taken a wild 180, starting with cold weather and snow across the country, and ending with record high temperatures. Hold on, guys. In other news, that is somewhat, but not really related, the National Weather Service has updated their forecast map projections. This will help us bring you more detailed information about the weather. Speaking of weather... This is struggle, guys. Struggle's real. Let's get to it. This weekend, rain showers is... <laughs> rain showers since... No, are projected to span the Northwest <laughs> Are we really doing this in one take? Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Ranch showers. <laughs> Whenever I stutter, I'm going to laugh now. <laughs> This might be the longest segment of weather we have, we've ever had. So Alright. Rain showers and snow are projected to span the northwest Pacific coast on Saturday. This precipitation is expected to move across the nation, bringing snow to the west, midwest, and northeast, and light rain in the southwest by Sunday. Now for the local weather. Sorry guys, just in case you didn't know that last thing right there with all the laughing, yeah, that was the national weather. I know we kind of got stretched out a little bit. Okay. On Saturday, your town will drop from paradise temperatures to 40 degrees and cloudy on Saturday. Sunday will slightly rise to a high temperature of 45 degrees. However, the clouds will part, bringing the potential for additional warmth from the sun. Don't worry, though, as cold temperatures this weekend are expected to give way to temperatures in the mid-50s throughout next week. I need to go see the chiropractor. On February 3rd, 1870, the 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified, guaranteeing the rights of citizens to vote regardless of their race, color, previous condition of servitude. Also on February 3rd, 1913, the 16th Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified, granting Congress the authority to collect income taxes. 
February 4th, 1985, marked the day that the 20 countries in the United Nations signed a document entitled Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Punishment or Treatment. Additionally, on February 4th, 1861, Apache Chief Cochise was arrested in Arizona by the U.S. Army for raiding a ranch. Cochise then escaped and declared war, beginning the period known as the Apache Wars, which lasted for 25 years. On the 5th of February in the year 1917, it was the day that the new Constitution of Mexico, which allowed for sweeping social changes, was adapted by the country. On February 6, 1788, Massachusetts became the sixth state to ratify the new U.S. Constitution by a vote of 187 to 168. Also, on February 6, 1933, the 20th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was adopted. It set the date for a presidential inauguration as January 20th instead of the old date of March 4th. It also sets January 3rd as the official opening date of Congress. On February 7th, 1795, the 11th Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified, limiting the powers of federal judiciary over the states by prohibiting federal lawsuits against individual states. British novelist Charles Dickens was born in Portsmouth, England on February 7th in the year 1812. Also, on February 8th, 1587, Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, was beheaded at Fortinghay, England after 19 years as a prisoner of Queen Elizabeth I. And finally, on February 8, 1910, the Boy Scouts of America was founded by William Boyce in Washington, D.C., modeled after the British Boy Scouts. Are you okay, Sam? Yeah, I'm all good, Chief. Are you sure? Because senior IS has been going around lately. Yeah, you know it's bad when I show up to swim practice more than I show up to school. Actually, according to my calculations, it's about the, it's about the same at the moment. Whatever. Anyways, welcome back to another episode of Sports, Sports Rap. Rap. Okay, we, <laughs> we messed that up, but yes, that's okay. Keep going. I'm your host, Alex Murphy, who's reliable and has yet to miss an episode. And I'm your host, Sam, who just kind of shows up when he wants to. To start, shout out to all the Grafton sports teams with big games this week. The swim team has regionals this Friday, and basketball senior night was on Thursday. Good luck, athletes, and go Grafton! This week in the NBA, it has been crazy. Go, it has been crazy with all the trade dead. Oh God! With the trade deadline approaching, trades have been going insane this week. To start, Harrison Barnes was traded in the middle of his game. Yeah, the shocked look on his face showed it all. But now he's in sunny California to play with De'Aaron Fox and the Kings. I know. I know. One of the biggest trades is Tobias Harris. Boban and Mike Scott of the Clippers were traded to the Sixers in exchange for Wilson Chandler, Lan Laundry, how, Laundry, Landry Shamit. Landry Shamit and Mike Muscola. The 76ers clearly won this trade. Like, what are the Clippers thinking? Tobias Harris is 26 and is nice with it. Bobby is a seven foot monster who doesn't even need to lift his feet off the floor to yam it on you. And then there's Mike Scott. Yeah, you're right. Michael Scott is not a good basketball player. Over here, over here! Three! <laughs> Wheeling it, dealing it's Super Bowl time! <laughs> <laughs> After the massive disappointment that was the NFL playoffs, the Super Bowl lived up to what the rest of the playoffs were like. The Patriots won. Again. In a 13-3 victory over the LA Rams. Many fans, including me, were disappointed because we are tired of the Patriots winning every year. Tom Brady, while he's a good quarterback, is annoying old and the Patriots would be nothing without him. Sam, calm down. It's okay. Bro, someone, someone else gotta win the Super Bowl, man. It's too, it's too predictable. You're right. But hey, you know a team that isn't the Patriots I swear that to should win next I year? I swear to God, if you say the Browns, I swear. The Browns and Baker, Mighty Mayfield, baby! Okay, sure, yeah. Got it. Anyways, halftime show was just as disappointing as the game, with Maroon 5 giving a terrible performance. I think the worst part of this was them teasing us with sweet victory and instead pulling out Travis Scott for sicko mode. Hey, at least it wasn't a trash Maroon 5 song like Moves Like Jagger. Sam, they performed that song too. Uh-oh. They should have pulled out their best song ever. I know, right? Their best song ever is... Payphone! One more night! Wait, wait, what wait, 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 Payphone is bad. So are like all their songs. True. Yeah. Anyways, that about does it here for us in Flavortown, Missouri. This is Sports Rap. We still have nicknames, but after the Super Bowl, I think Sam should be salty. Ouch, but if you want my nickname to be salty, then comment Salt Squad down below! 
Really? You're stealing my hashtag thing? Yeah, I am. Deal with it. Anyways, see you guys next week. Peace.